Hey guys, and welcome to part two of creating a library system using Python. So before we start this tutorial, I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are aware that this tutorial is going to be for pure beginners. So the stuff that we're going to be doing in this tutorial is going to be pretty basic. And we're not actually going to go through the full scope of creating a library system, but just the basic aspects of it. So if you haven't already watched the previous tutorial, I highly, highly recommend you do because in part one, what we did was scraping the data from a uh, scrapable website using um, uh, requests and proxies in order to basically have the data related to books, their availability um, and their prices that we're going to be using in this tutorial. So the last tutorial was sponsored by IP Royal, who have kindly also sponsored today's tutorial. IPRoyal is a proxy service provider providing safe, private and unrestricted access to online information. With a pool of over 2 million plus reliable IPs, IPRoyal allows clients to use a proxy server as an intermediary between their devices and the web, which, which allows clients to maintain their privacy and use resources they can't access directly due to geo restrictions, etc. IP Royal's data center proxies can serve as a great product for businesses or users looking for premium high-speed anonymous private proxies, which usually have unlimited bandwidth and no extra charges. For data scraping though, I would recommend using IP Royal's re residential proxies as they not only allow anonymity when scraping websites, which can help avoiding getting rate limited, but also let you select the geolocation of the proxy either through the dashboard or by making minor changes in your code. Lastly, IP Royal handles automatic IP rotation, which not only allows easy integration within your code, but they also provide the option to use static IPs in case that you decide to keep an IP for a longer duration of time. In this video, IP Royal has given me access to their discount codes, which will give you a straight 30% discount on your Royal Residential proxies. The discount code is Johan30 and can be used to buy their Royal Residential proxies. So guys, please make sure to grab your discount codes and make your purchases for Royal Residential proxies today from IP Royal or you'll be missing out on a great deal. So now that you know a bit more about IP Royal, what we're going to be doing is hopping right into the code. So what we have here is a uh, .py file that we're going to be coding in. So what we want to do first is um, we're going to import a library called pandas, which is what we're going to be using to basically read our data. So import pandas as pd. And we also want to import time because we're going to be using time to basically cause some delays in our program, make it look a bit more realistic and fun than usual. So first things first, what we want to do is um, if you're working on your desktop, for example, which I am, uh, you want to move your um, database file that we basically scraped in the last tutorial onto the same folder as your script. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. Uh, if you bear with me one second. I'm just going to move my database file to the desktop and once that's done what you want to do is create a new variable called data and we're going to use pandas to read in that csv file so make sure to mention the exact um, file name including the file extension and what we can do is just print the data to make sure that we're actually loading in this properly so i'm going to open cmd here and then i'm going to activate um, my uh, environment because I've got different environments for different projects, but if you've installed all your packages like pandas and time on the same uh, like default environment, that's okay. You don't need to activate any environment. So to run the script, I have to first navigate to the folder where my script is. So mine is on desktop and then just type in Python and the name of the script. So Python library system main.py. And as you can see, the uh, first part of the code ran successfully because it's printing out the CSV file as a nice data frame. So we've got um, four different columns. So we've got the book ID, book image URL, book price, book availability, and so on. So the book ID was actually manually created by me because um, the uh, website we didn't scrape the book ID from. So what you want to do in Excel is just create a new column called book ID and then just start typing in numbers from uh, one until all the way to the end because we're going to be needing that in our code. So oh, I shouldn't have closed that. But anyway, what you want to do next is um, create a variable called balance. So this is going to be your account balance. So how much money you currently have in order to purchase books, 
we'll set that up to something um, reasonable like 40 pounds and then we'll move on to the rest so the next thing is creating a menu function which will basically print out the different options that the user has access to on the main menu so it's just a bunch of print statements the first one will be welcome to the library you can give your library a name but i'm not as creative so i'm just going to call it welcome to the library and then we want to type in the different options so first option is going to be purchase a book then the second option is going to be um, exit so like i said the tutorial is going to be pretty simple and we're just going to be having two functions one being purchasing a book another one being exiting the library so if you wanted to if you like want to practice your code and skills after the uh, finish of this tutorial you could add another option called uh, returning the book which when you return the book uh, the library will return the money that you paid for the book so that's up to you guys but in this tutorial we're just covering purchasing a book as a functionality so the next function we're going to need is quite an important function. It's basically going to print out all the books and their information to the user. So we're going to do uh, view books as the function name. And then what we're going to do is basically loop through the data frame uh, or the CSV file that we loaded in with pandas. Um, so we're going to loop through each row of it. So for i and range 0 comma length of data, what we want to do is create a new variable called row. and row is going to be data.iloc i. iloc will basically help you uh, locate each row uh, using the uh, index. So it's row start with zero and, and ends with uh, whatever the last uh, index of the data frame is. So now that we've got the whole row, what you want to do is grab the different elements of it. So we need the ID. So I'm going to do uh, ID equals row and that's going to be book ID. So you need to put the column names in here. Then we want the title as well. So the title is going to be row book title. That's the second column. Then price, which is going to be row book um, price. Just make sure you have these exact same column names in your CSV. Otherwise, you're going to uh, encounter an error. Availability and mine is called book availability. Okay. Now the last thing we want to do is actually just print this in a nice format so that all the books can be like printed out to the user and the the IDs can be printed out as well so they can select what book they want to purchase for example. So I'm going to do print str ID so that's the book ID plus uh, dot book title not title uh, title and then we want to print out the title then we want to show the price of the book so price I'm going to add a pound sign or dollar sign, whichever you prefer, and STR price. And then lastly, the availability. So the availability variable. Okay, so that should be our view books function pretty much ready. Let's test it out by running it. So we'll run the menu function first, and then we'll run the, we'll do a time.sleep here of like, let's say five seconds, so we have enough time to see it and then we'll do view books let me do the same process again in cmd because i accidentally closed the windows app to now do the whole thing again so activate my under and then python library system okay here we go the first part is running so the menu works it's showing properly and then as you can see um, our view books function is pretty much working as intended as well. It's printing out the ID of the book, the title, the price, and availability as well, which is perfect because the user can basically just go for it and find the ID of the book they want to purchase. Cool. So this time I'm not going to make the rookie mistake of closing the command prompt. Um, oops. Uh, do we want to go here? Okay. I'm just going to do CLS to clear the console. Okay. Nice. Now. The next thing you want to do is we can get rid of this because we were just testing those functions. We want to create an infinite loop, um, which is only going to be broken when the user presses uh, the number two uh, to basically exit our program. So first things first, we want to display the menu to the user. Then we want to grab the input uh, from the user based on the menu. So we're going to grab an integer input and create a new line and say, please enter a number for us 
funding the options to the options above. Then we want to basically print the option that the user selected back to him. So you selected option. Uh, and then what do you comma menu option menu input so that will basically show the user what option they selected just to cross check with them and then we can start with the logic so we'll say if menu input is equal to three we said uh, sorry two we said two would be exit so if it's two then we simply print uh, exiting and then we time dot sleep let's say three seconds and then just break through the loop and that will pretty much break through our main loop and end the program then we want to uh, do an elif here so we'll say elif menu input equals one which is basically purchasing a book this is where we have to create another loop because uh, there can be a few things that happen when the user purchases a book for example they may want to purchase multiple books and then return to main menu so we don't want to redirect them straight away to the main menu unless they want to so we do another loop so one one and then first things first we view the books in here so um th let's do this for now and just test our program so we're going to test the exiting functionality and we're also going to test the uh, input menu and we can also add an else in here to say if the user enters anything apart from these two options, just say something like invalid option selected, please try again. Something like that. So let's test it out. Uh, get my cn command prompt up here. Run the command. Let's do, let's say five. And it says, you selected five invalid option. Please uh, select it. Please try again. Let's exit. And that will exit in, I think it was five seconds. Yep. And we are returned back to the command prompt. And then let's try uh, purchase the book. And as we can see, it's doing as intended, printing out all the books in the data frame. Now, um, this loop will keep running because we've done a while one loop. So to stop it, I'm just going to do control C. And then I'm going to clear my console again. So if we go back to the code, um, what you want to do now is basically grab the input of the book ID from the user. So finding out what book they want to purchase. So int input and then pretty much the same as the menu. Please enter a number corresponding to the options above. And then we'll say for main menu enter zero because we also need to allow the user to go back to the main menu if they want to so now the important bit is we check if the user enters zero i'm just making a comment to remember quit to main menu so we'll add a bit of logic here that does exactly that so if book id equals zero so if the user enters zero there we're just going to break and that's going to lead us back into our main loop which will display the menu to the user again so if the user doesn't, then we carry on with the book search. So we now actually need to search through our whole um, our whole data frame or the CSV to find the book that matches the ID the user has entered. So book search result will be a variable. And then we do data and we use the query option in Pandas to basically find the book, uh, book uh, the row that matches this book ID. So we'll say book ID double equals and then the book ID variable that the user has given us up here. So this will basically grab the row um, that matches this book ID. And if there is no rows, it will just return an empty data frame. So first off, we check if there is actually a book with this ID. So we say if book search result, the length of the data frame, if it's less than one, that means there is no book with this ID. So just print uh, invalid option selected. Please try again. And then we'll just do a time.sleep of let's say five seconds here. Then we do elif book search result. Now this elif is basically we're gonna be checking, next thing we're checking is for availability. So if the book was actually found, uh, we wanna make sure that it's actually available to buy. So we do book search result dot iloc zero to basically grab the first row of the result, which is gonna be the only row anyway. And then we do book availability make sure this is this matches your column in the csv otherwise it will pretty much error so we say elif uh, book search dot iloc zero book availability is not equal to so 
if it doesn't equal to in stock that means it's out of stock then we print the selected uh, book is out of stock please select a different book and then we print loading menu in around 10 seconds and then time.sleep 10 seconds so um, if the user tries to select a book that isn't available, uh, then the user will be notified and then they'll be redirected back to the book menu again, where they can see all the books again and select a different book. Now, finally, if uh, the book exists within our database uh, and it is in stock, this L should cover that. So say so we'll print out the information of the book that user has purchased. So, so you have selected the following book. Just create a new line here and a new line at the end and then we'll print all the details of the book so book title that's going to be book search result dot iloc zero book title make sure you've got your column names correct here i'm just going to copy and paste this because i need to do book price so book price and book availability as well so availability change this to book availability availability make sure your column names are matching and that's pretty much going to sort it out now we want to print a bit of like system gimmick so we'll do attempting attempting to purchase the book with your account balance dot 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 and we need to time dot sleep here so that the p person thinks it's a bit realistic and then we'll print out the user's like account balance which we stored in our variable at the start so we'll say your account balance is pound sign and then plus str balance which is the variable we created at the very start up here so that will print out their balance to them and then now we need to actually check if the user has enough balance to purchase this book so we'll do if balance is greater or equal to book search result dot i lock um, zero uh, book price so if it is actually equal or greater to the price of the book uh, then you print you have um, sufficient funds to purchase the book and then we'll basically have to deduct this sum from the user's balance so balance minus equals book search result i look zero uh, book price now if you don't want to repeat typing this long ass thing every time you could just save this into a variable but i'm i'm just lazy so i haven't um it's probably good practice to save this into a variable actually but uh, since we've already got so far i'm not going to bother so this line will basically deduct the uh, price of the book from the user's balance and then we need to show the updated balance to the user so we'll say your updated account balance is uh, pound sign plus str balance balance then we can just put a few more lines of print saying you have now purchased purchased the book uh, and then we return the user back to the main menu in case they want to purchase more books so return to menu in 10 seconds dot 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 and then time dot sleep 10 seconds now this is in case the user has enough balance so we need to add it else as well here to make sure we cover what happens if the user doesn't have enough balance so we'll say else print insufficient funds to purchase this book and then print the account balance so the user knows why there's insufficient funds plus str balance and then print once again returning to menu in 10 seconds sleep for 10 seconds and our program is pretty much finished so that was a pretty simple implementation of a library system let's just test it and hope for no errors which i'm doubtful of, but let's give it a go anyway so what we're going to do first, try purchasing a book. 
Now, for the sake of this tutorial, what I've done with the first book that shows up is changed it from in stock to like something that isn't in stock, so destock. You could change this to out of stock, for example, which makes more sense. So if I were to select book one, it should say this uh, book is not available to purchase. So select another option or something along those lines. So let's try and purchase book number one. Your selected book is out of stock. Please try a different book loading menu in 10 seconds. Perfect. It works. What if we try to enter a uh, book ID that doesn't exist? So let's say 1000 or 2000 actually, because the last book here is 1020. 2000 it says invalid option selected. Please try again. Perfect. So that's working as well. Now this time we're actually going to try to purchase a book that we can't afford. So our account balance was like 40 quid. So we try to purchase book 1019 it should not allow us to. So it says you have selected the book, first the die, which is correct. And then the price shows up as well, availability is in stock. It says attempting to purchase the book with your account balance, your account balance is 40, insufficient funds to purchase this book. And then it shows the account balance again. And then it returns us back to the main menu, which is perfect. This time, let's try to purchase a book actually that we can afford. So let's do uh, one zero, two zero. The book price was 26 pounds, eight pence. So should go through hopefully shows us the details shows us it's in stock which is good uh, and then it shows us the updated account balance now you can change this uh, using the round functionality to basically show you only up to two decimal digits so that's a bit of a challenge for you guys and now if we try to purchase um, let's say book 1019 which shouldn't let us because our updated balance should be 40 minus 26.08 so um, yeah, a bit less than what it was before. So it says uh, account balance is £13 because obviously we purchased a book before and it won't let us purchase this book again. So we can now test out the last thing which was uh, press 0 to enter to main menu. So press 0, here we go. We are back into that main menu from where we can exit or purchase a book. So let's exit. Uh, it's going to exit in two seconds. And that's pretty much it guys. I hope you have enjoyed today's tutorial and learned something new. Um, if the tutorial was a bit too basic, I apologize, but this was really designed for like um, beginners that are trying to get pro a nice little program to like brush up their knowledge. So I hope I was able to help. Um, once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors IP Royal for today's video. And I really uh, recommend you do check out their proxies because we've got a discounted rate. So go ahead and check them out, guys. And if you have any other video ideas, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.